my name is Maddie and you are back at True Summer Knits. Um, here I do my little video podcast about my knitting or just other videos talking about my knitting or crafting. And today we are back for another one of those knitting podcasts. Side note, uh, if the audio sounds different, I don't know if it will. I did get a new microphone or my husband got a new microphone for his music and I am using it for this. So hopefully the audio sounds better. I've been kind of messing around with it a little bit, but let me know what you think if it sounds any different or better. So the last video I posted was my July pattern roundup, or the last video I posted was my June pattern roundup, which did really well and I will definitely be doing that at the end of every month. So I've already been saving patterns from July, so you'll see another one of those in a few weeks. But today is just gonna be a regular video where I talk about my knitting. My last podcast wasn't that long ago, but it feels like so long ago. Just I feel like a lot of my stuff knitting wise has changed. And uh, I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. So I do have a finished object, but I will go ahead and say I'm not happy with it. And I saved it for this video to show you, but it is gonna get unraveled. But we'll go ahead and show you. So first I'm gonna tell you the yarn, which if you've been watching my past few videos, you know this yarn has been on a journey. This is Blueberry Ice Cream by Knitting for Olive. It's their cotton merino. And I love this yarn. And the color is amazing. As soon as I saw this color, I wanted to buy it. I think it's sold out everywhere. Uh, I love it. But if you remember, first I cast on the Alana camisole with it. And I started knitting it. I got to the two triangles. I wasn't liking the fabric. And then that's when I realized I had accidentally started knitting the wrong size and I wasn't really liking it anyway, so I just unraveled and started something else. And I showed a little bit of it in the last podcast, I think, but I started knitting the Petal Drop Camisole, which is a beautiful pattern. It was really fun to knit. Um, I really liked the, the pattern and I thought, like knitting wise, I thought it was like some of my best work, just it looked really clean, but then I finished it and I put it on. I'll just show it to you first. So I can't even show it to you with me wearing it because I just look naked. Um, and if I wear a tank top under it, it looks so strange. But I'll go ahead and show you the finished object. So this is my finished petal drop camisole. It is really beautiful. It is really beautiful to look at. And theoretically, it would have looked so good on me. But a few things as to why I am unraveling it. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I posted a little bit about this on my Instagram story. As soon as I tried it on, well, first, when I tried it on the first time after uh, I finished it, or I think when I was about to finish it, before I put on the eye cord, I noticed it was see-through, but I didn't try it on with a bra when I f before I finished it. I just tried it on all natural, and I thought it was going to... I thought the bra would kind of cover up the see-throughness or it would make it look a little more natural because I had that same issue with my Barbro top, which was another all-over lace camisole. But I realized the problem was not so much the see-throughness, the problem was the contrast between like whatever I'm wearing underneath and the finished piece. So my Barbro top, I'm putting a picture of that if you haven't seen it, it was a very light gray. So when I wore it over a bra, you could see the bra through it, but it just kind of blended in because it was almost like a nudish color. So this one, no matter even if I wear a nude bra, all you see through the holes is just the lightness of the bra. I even tried ordering, like I literally ordered another bra to try to get this to work because I really love this and I didn't want to have to unravel it. I tried to get a gray bra to put underneath it, but it still just looks weird. I like put it over like a black tank top, it looks weird. Like everything looks looks weird with it. It's just super see-through. I think this pattern could still work if you knit it in like a color that's like nude for you or like a lighter color, but this in this color, it's just not gonna work. It's just completely see-through. I don't feel comfortable wearing it. Yeah, and then another thing is I thought the straps were a little tight before I put the eye cord on them, but I figured it would grow with the cotton merino. Um, but then I put the eye cord on, and even after blocking, it sits right underneath my, like, 
arm hole and it's so tight and uncomfortable that I'm just like physically aware of it the entire time I'm wearing it. So for that and the fact that it's see-through and I don't feel comfortable wearing it and the third fact that I love this yarn, I am going to be unraveling this. I don't know exactly what it's going to become yet. I've got some ideas um, and it's probably not going to be right now because I'm working on some other stuff. But yeah, I definitely will take a nice picture of it like laying down, uh, not on me because it's a really nice like finished object. Like it's very pretty to look at. But in terms of wearing it, I don't really like it. But I'll give you some details on the pattern because I did knit the entire thing and I enjoyed the pattern and I enjoyed knitting it. It was a really fun knit. So this is knit bottom up. You can even see like how see-through it is. <laughs> like there, it's just completely see-through. Uh, so this is knit bottom up. You cast on down here. Uh, you knit in the round for a while. It also was way too cropped. I knit it to the length in the pattern because I have a short torso, so usually I knit things a little shorter anyway. And I th also thought it would grow a little bit with blocking, but it comes like right to my belly button. It's like way too cropped even for me. So if you do knit it, I would probably like make sure you like the length before you start doing the waist shaping because I did not like the length. But you keep knitting for a while until you get to the part where she wants you to start waist shaping. The waist shaping looks very nice. Um, just looks like you can see how see-through it is. Hold on, let me try to... So you can see it looks really nice. It's really like well done. The pattern is beautiful. It's super simple. I think like mostly it's knits and pearls. It's a four row repeat. In general, it's a really easy pattern to knit and it's really enjoyable. Um, and then, you know, you do the waist shaping, you start casting off for the underarms, um, you bind off some stitches, keep casting off for the straps, and then you do an eye cord to finish it. And I did think my eye cord was really neat, and I love doing eye cord, it's so fun. But yeah, so it's nothing against the pattern, it's a well written pattern, it's well designed, it's pretty, but I just can't get it to work for me in this color. Um, I'm sure, I, I was looking through the Ravelry project pages to see if anybody else had this problem. And there were some people whose pictures I could see their bra, but other people it seemed to work okay. I don't know if it's just, I don't know why. Maybe if I knit it like a bigger size uh, or I knit it at a smaller gauge, it might work. But I do feel like it looks very smooth. I don't know. Um, if I might knit this again one day and just knit it in a nude color like I did the Barbara top, but it kind of sucks because I really, like, I mean, it's so pretty. Like, I wish I could wear this. Like, you look, you do it like this and you're like, oh my god, that's beautiful. But it just, it's just not working. So, I'm going to unravel this, unfortunately. Um, I did knit this on 3mm needles, which I usually knit knitting for all this stuff on 2.75mm needles, but I did meet gauge just fine with 3mm needles. So, even though it didn't work for me, I would recommend the pattern. Uh, I would just say, to be safe, maybe consider knitting it in like a nude to you color or, you know, like a, a color that kind of matches your skin tone or your bra or whatever, because the contrast at the end of the day is what makes this unwearable for me, plus the armhole depth. I would definitely, I wish I had knit the straps longer so I would have had a deeper armhole depth, but hindsight is twenty twenty. So that was a few minutes of me talking about the Petal Drop Camisole, which is my only finished object. And I do have some works in progress that's going to go in with my acquisitions, sort of. And this is actually something I'm knitting freehand without a pattern, which is really exciting. I've always wanted to do this. And I've, I've really loved, if you've seen my videos since day one, I have talked about how much I love the uh, boat neck tops, like I've really wanted to knit something like that, a simple stockinette boat neck top. Um, I was really excited when I saw My Favorite Things Knitwear come out with the camisole number 10. It wasn't as fitted as I wanted, but it was a boat neck top just in stockinette, but then it turned out the gauge was in was the DK gauge. That's just too big for me. I really want a fingering weight fitted boat neck top, and I can't find one like it. I, I talked in the last video about the mixed rib cami, which I bought and I'm definitely going to do, but I also just want a simple stockinette one because I feel like that'll be like the perfect basic for me. So I decided 
I'm just gonna do it. I've been talking about how I've been trying to, to knit my own camisole without a pattern, and for a while I was planning on doing lace. I spent so long swatching and looking through lace stitch dictionaries. I tried two different yarns. The first yarn was, uh, that I was trying for a long time, and I talked about this in the last video, was my Pure Silk in Ice Blue, which I have three balls of, and I definitely want to knit something with it, but I couldn't find anything that I liked swatched, that I enjoyed like working with, that like inspired me. So eventually I sat that down and I started knitting with the Cotton Merino, and I really liked that, and that's when I decided I was going to do the boat neck. But the only color I had was the Japanese Anemone, and that color wasn't really inspiring me right now. So I went ahead and I bought three balls of the Knitting for Olive Soft Blue, which is this very grayish blue. In my opinion, it's a little bit bluer in person. I think this, this lighting kind of grays it out some. But I really like the way this looks on my skin. I feel like it's like a perfect neutral, you know? So I thought this would be perfect for just a simple, basic stockinette top. So I got to work, and I'll show you, I actually knit a lot of it. I knit, uh, I'm knitting it top down, and I felt like I was doing it good. I, did, I, I took a lot of measurements. I literally drew out like a diagram of, of it on paper so I could kind of understand the ratios of everything, how that everything works. And I knit the entire thing from the straps to where it meets under the arms. And then I did all of the eye cord around the edges. And I'll show that to you real quick. So you may notice there are no eye cord edges on this now. That's because I ripped them out. Um, this is no longer like the actual project. I wonder if I could try this on for, I'm gonna look ridiculous, but I wonder if I can like show you how, why, why this doesn't work right now. Okay, I kind of can with it since I'm, wearing, since I'm wearing this. So it looks, good when I have um, no eye cord on, but I definitely want the straps and the neckline to be wider, like more like that. When I put the eye cord on, this kind of chokes me a little bit, and the same here, it, it looks like a good depth, but when you get the eye cord on, it's a little too high. And I also just felt like it was looking a little small. Um, I wanted, I'm gonna take this off now because I feel stupid. I was considering how much, I wanted it to be fitting, so I was considering how much um, negative ease I wanted to do, and uh, you know, if you're doing something like a rib or something that contracts a lot, you want more negative ease, but since this is stockinette, it only has, it's stretchy, but it only has so much stretch, you know, so I didn't want to be, I guess I didn't want to do too much negative ease, so I was like doing research, and I decided to do 10%. But this one I actually made a little bit smaller because I like couldn't decide. And then once I finally tried it on, I felt like it was a little too small. Um, the straps were too close together. And a big problem that is a big reason actually to why I decided to start over was because... Oh, it's inside out. When I knit this, I for, it's hard to tell because the stock knit rolls, but I knit the front and back exactly the same. So I just basically cast on the strap knit a few rows, knit a couple of increases, and then cast it on for the neckline um, because it's a boat neck, so there's not much shaping. And then I decided just to do the back the same way. But obviously, people say it all the time, your back, the back of your neck is up higher than the front of your neck. And a lot of tank tops, that's not a problem if you have a lower neckline. But because this is a higher neckline, it, it, since it sits so low on my back neck, it pulls it up to my neck, like all the way up here, which isn't too uncomfortable when you don't have the eye cord, but I really want the eye cord. So it chokes me, like, especially because of that. And then you look behind me and the boat neck sits here, here, but then it sits like all the way down the back of my neck. So I decided to take all of these changes into account and start over. Another thing, that I didn't consider, because obviously I'm learning so much here. Like, you can think a lot about how to knit a pattern from scratch, but it's hard to know, like, exactly where to start or what to consider when you've never done it before. So, basically my thought process when I cast this on was I did calculate how many stitches I'd want around the bust, 
and then I cast, I figured out how big I wanted the neck to be at first, and I cast it on for there, and then after I cast on, I went back to figure out how I should shape the increases, and that was another reason why I want the neck to be wider, because there was a big difference in the stitches I have up here versus the stitches I want to have by my down by my bust. I I feel like a lot of uh, patterns inc start increasing only down here, and I do like the thought or the way it looks when I start doing far, more increases up here further apart. So I did do that, but it was just I felt like it was a little difficult. Um, I had really just didn't I didn't cast on with the increases in mind. So this time when I started over, I really wanted to think through, okay, how many stitches do I need to have the bust? What do I want the shaping to look like? What stitch count do I need to start with at the neckline? So I'm gonna show you guys my kind of life-like diagram that I drew, trying to figure out all the ratios and the measurements and the stitch counts. So I have a bunch of medical exam paper that I, I use for sewing, like drawing out patterns and stuff. And I found some and used it for this. Hold on, there's so much paper. So my cat's played with this, so it doesn't look nice and neat anymore. I just did this all on the floor. I wonder if you'll be able to even see this. So, oh, there's no way you're gonna be able to see this. Okay, you can kind of see it. This was the original measurements of the first one I did. And basically, I took all the changes, I drew it out here, you can kind of see it. There's no point in showing you this, you really can't see much. But I wrote the gauge down, I took rulers, and I measured between everything to figure out how many stitches, I drew all the stitch numbers down, and I went ahead and planned in advance how many rows I needed to get to the part of my bust where the increases are done, how many stitches I need to increase, where I want to put the increases, so now I feel a lot more prepared. And to just go ahead and do the back neck, I'm going to do it differently. So instead, even though I don't knit very much on the front, I'm basically going to knit like not at all in the back, like maybe just one, one round per strap and then just cast on for the back neck. Um, so that's what I'm planning to do so that it'll be higher. And I widened the neckline by like two inches because when I put it on, it was literally like hugging my neck and I wanted it to be further apart like I like a boat neck to be, you know? So I don't have very much done, but I do feel like I have a plan this time. But it does really suck to get a lot of work done and then feel like you like wasted that time. And also it feels like, like when I first was doing the first sample or the first, uh, attempt, I was really confident that it was going to work out. And the thing that sucks about having to restart something is you kind of lose that confidence. So even though I did it all on paper and it looks good, um, I just keep second guessing myself and worrying that it's going to be too big or the shaping is not going to work out. Although looking at it like this, I feel like it is kind of where I want it to be. So. It took me like three days to knit that first attempt, and I just started knitting this like at the end of the day yesterday. So hopefully I can get back to where I was, and I can do the eye cord and try it on, and go from there. Because then after that, that's the hard part of this design. Once you get down to there, all I have to do is calculate waist shaping, and it's just stockinette, so that won't be very difficult. Also, I posted on my Instagram story about how I had an idea for finishing the edges because obviously, like I said, I want to do I cord. But personally, and this might just be my opinion, when you do I cord edging on pure stockinette, it it doesn't have enough weight to keep it from fully rolling, and also not enough weight on the I cord itself, so that it looks kind of floppy. Like this is the look she intended, but when I look at like the June top by Petite Knit. I feel like it still rolls a little bit, the neckline looks like a little floppy, and I just feel like it makes it look more casual, which is perfect for that top, but I want this to be like a more elegant, elevated basic, so I wanted like a stiffer, you know, more clean eye cord edging. So I tried it out on the first one, and I, I obviously don't have it to show you anymore, 
but I'll explain to you basically what I did. So, so I'm just gonna kind of demonstrate. So normally, you know, when you pick up for an I chord, you just go through that top stitch, you know, just pick up that loop and then pull it through. Well, instead of just picking up right at the edge, basically what I did was, this is the inside, I went down and I actually pinned everything down at first. I rolled the edge down like this, so just about maybe two stitches were on the inside. And I tried to account for this in my, um, like when I was drafting all the measurements and stuff. So I folded it down like that, all around the inside on the neckline and the armholes. And then when I picked up the stitch, I went through the basically the bottom of the stitch where that, that stitch is on the inside, and I put it through there, and then I cast on the stitch through here. So there's more weight on the inside of the I cord, and it really helped it prevent it from rolling. And also since you had folded it over, I wish I still had it to show you, but it had this folded over look on the outside of the I cord where, where the actual top meets the I cord that kind of bubbled out a little bit. Like, it looked like an actual knit neck binding that you would do when you're sewing a knit. And I thought it looked really nice and clean. But I just definitely needed the neckline to be wider. And it definitely tightens everything up, so you just have to be more careful. But, yeah, so that worked out. Um, I definitely want to release this as a tutorial eventually. Like, I think once I figured it out, I've been, like, reading a book on pattern grading and stuff. So I would like to grade it into bigger sizes, get it tested, write a pattern, but just release it as a free tutorial on my YouTube channel, and then maybe have a written pattern alongside it for you to follow. So that's my plan with this. It probably won't come out in the summertime, but in my opinion, that, that kind of boat neck top, I'm gonna show you like an example of like what I'm wanting to do, is just the perfect basic to wear like all year round, because like you can wear it in the fall and winter, under like a cardigan or a blazer um, in neutral colors or like pops of colors and they'll really stand out or you can just wear it by itself in the summer as you know just a tank top and it looks really nice. I'm knitting the the this is obviously designed for cotton merino or the merino for my kind of summer versions I'm knitting them in cotton merino and then I'm thinking well I, I want to knit the, the mixed rib cami in uh, the fall out of merino, but I also would like to knit another one of this in merino for like a wintry fall or fall version of my boat neck top. So I will keep updating you about this. Um, I think in a couple days I should be back to where I was. I'm really hoping I don't have to start over again and that I figured it out. <laughs> but uh, after that I am gonna work on grading it and writing it out and hopefully some people will test it for me so I can make a tutorial for it on my YouTube channel. So this is definitely going to be a shorter episode by the way because I have less to talk about because obviously I've been working really hard in the boat neck top and I don't have that much to show and I didn't like this so I kind of ran out of stuff to talk about it and my only acquisitions were the soft blue and a sock yarn. So I'm about to talk about the sock yarn because me and the sock yarn have beef. I'm using it because I bought it and it was like $12 but I'm mad at it and I will never buy it again. And it's not even because the quality of the yarn itself, it's more like the quality control. Like, okay, let me show you the sock yarn. I really wanted, hold on, my dog is pitter pattering around. Anyway, so I've heard of those bamboo sock yarns. It's where they're like a mix of wool, bamboo and the nylon. And I thought that'd be really nice for like a summery sock, you know? because I've been talking a lot recently about how I want to knit my summery ankle socks. So I found this yarn originally on Lovecrafts, but then it didn't have this color in stock, which I love this color. So I found it on this website called Michigan Fine Yarns, which is, I'm guessing, a yarn store in Michigan. So I ordered it from there, I think it was like $12, and then I paid for shipping, which was cheap, like $4. And I got the Rico, do I still have the label? I do still have the label. So this is the Rico Superba Bamboo Uni Superwash. Um, it is 50% virgin wool, 25% viscose, and 
25% polyamide. Now, the yarn itself, I, I like it. The color's beautiful. It's um, kind of a slightly rougher sock yarn. And in my opinion, I, I like things really soft. So I am not like the person to call things rough, but it's still soft enough. It's got like a nice fuzz to it from the wool. It's a beautiful color, but the quality control. Okay, so the first yard, I don't have that first yard because I cut it out, but I start, I start knitting a sock with it. Um, I was working on the summer flower sock. I had to rip it out because the yarn, I'll tell you, the yarn gets so bad that I ended up having to cut it multiple times. So literally the first yard, like first few rows of this sock yarn, there's a big knot. So I didn't even see it. I start knitting like the twisted rib. This is this is the second one. I had to start it over twice because I kept finding stuff I had to cut out. But basically I start knitting the twisted rib of this sock. I get to a certain part and I find the big knot. So I'm not gonna, I don't wanna have an end to weave in right there, you know? So I cut it, I start over and then I will show, I kept this, I kept this part of the yarn because it's ridiculous. So a few more yards in, basically I start doing the lace and I'm like halfway through the, the 12 row lace repeat. And I notice this big chunk of the yarn that is like not spun correctly. And can you see that? Do you, do you see that? It's the, like the, the, it's, I think it's either the nylon fiber or the bamboo fiber that's unspun and undyed. And so you, you have this huge, like very long strip. It goes on for a while. Uh, it starts, starts thinning out, but you can still very clearly see the white fibers in it for like a long time. Like I had to cut all of this out. Um, I don't know how that happened. And it was right in the outside of the ball. And so then I start kind of poking through it and I can see it there. Um, you can look through the ball, you can find it in all these other places. Hold on, let me show you another, there's like another spot where it was like really noticeable. It's, oh, well, you can, you can see it there. It's hard to show because it's smaller, but there's a lot of like strands that have that white spun through it. And clearly it's not on purpose because it's only like on a few parts. But the fact that the first like part of the yarn from right when you open up the skein is defective basically that really irritated me and like you can look through it and i can see some other knots and like there's this part where the the fiber is like coming out of this strand so i'm gonna have to cut that too and you can see the the weird white fibers so i feel like if i bought this yarn like knowing you know maybe this skein was like a little little messed up i paid less for it it wouldn't bother me but like paying $12 for this skein where I keep having to cut it, I had to cut it, cut it multiple times because there's a little bit of the white fiber, it's not a big deal, but this entire strand had that thick, thick white fiber spun through it. Like I can't really use that, it'd be so noticeable. So that really irritated me. I completely stopped doing the sock because I was tired of repeating it. Like I had to cast it on like a couple times because things kept just like being messed up with the yarn. And so I feel like I paid for a certain amount of yarn and I'm, I don't get that amount of yarn because some of it's like defective. So maybe I'm just being like a Karen right now, but honestly, I'm, I'm mad about this ball of yarn. I'm still going to use it. I like the way it feels. I love the color. I want socks out of this yarn, but yeah, it's just been really irritating, like finding those spots and having to work through it. Like the only ends I like to weave in on my socks are when you start and when you end, usually that's fine when it comes to sock yarn, but so yeah, that was just my rant of the video about the Rico Superba, Superba, uh, bamboo superwash sock yarn. Um, I'm sh hopefully it's just this ball of yarn. Like I've never bought anything else from this company. I don't know if this is an issue. They have a lot with their balls of yarn. Um, but I, there are other brands of bamboo sock yarn, so if I really like this experience, I probably just won't buy this again because it's expensive for having to cut out a bunch of defective parts of the yarn. You know what I mean? I'll talk a little bit about the socks I'm planning on knitting with this. So, this is the one that I ripped out. I still haven't, like, fully unraveled it. 
I love this lace pattern. It's the Summer Flowers pattern by This Handmade Life. But I just kept having to start over and it irritated me so much that I didn't want to knit it anymore. And I was so tired of knitting Twisted Rib from, again, having to keep starting it over that I was like, you know what? I'm going to unravel this and start a toe-up sock pattern because honestly, I prefer toe-up socks, which I know is like an unpopular opinion, but I much prefer starting with the toe and just like knit knitting in the round for a while than starting with a rib. I feel like when you first cast on and you're trying to knit twisted rib on little needles and like you're right at the cast on edge, it's so fiddly and irritating. Like I just want to get to where some of the sock is done and it's easier. I'll tell you what sock I started. I literally have nothing done. Like I cast it on last night and literally all I've done is the Judy's Magic cast on and like a couple of rows. I think I just started the toe increases. So I really have nothing to show but I'll tell you what sock I'm doing. So if you've watched me before, This Handmade Life is my favorite sock designer. She, she was a designer of this that I unraveled from this yarn, and she's a designer of this toe-up sock that I'm, decide I'm going to knit. So most of her socks are cuffed down if you are interested in knitting her patterns and you don't like toe-up socks, but she's got like a few, like maybe four or five toe-up patterns, and most of them are part of this series uh, where it's like, I think she does these like Agathy, Ag Agatha Christie socks where she bases socks off characters from that. So these are the St. Mary Mead socks. Um, it's just another lace sock. The, this one has a much simpler lace pattern, which is nice for me because if I'm working on something exclusively, I like having more complicated patterns. But if I'm going to be picking something up and putting it down, like because I'm working on the boat neck top, I find that having it too complicated means I can easily get lost or like mixed up. So this one is a lot of stock in it and then like some some rows of simple eyelets and it looks really beautiful, more complicated than it is. So it's toe up. So I, like I said, I started with the Judy's Magic cast on. You increase for the toe and the rest of it's kind of knit like every sock. I think it's got a slip, slip, slip stitch heel. So it actually doesn't have a slip stitch. It's got a it's got a gusset heel, and then you it looks like you do basically sh short rows for the heel, um, and decreases, and that's how you do the, the that. And then the sock in the picture is longer, but I'll probably do like a couple of rounds of repeats. So it's like a couple inches above my ankle, because that's what I'm liking for summer right now. But yeah, it's been a journey with this sock yarn, and I'm not looking forward to having to cut out more pieces, but I can see more pieces that are not usable. I mean, like, look at this random strand of yarn that's, like, overspun. It's, like, really thin and, like, all cut up. I don't know. I don't know how that happens. just feel like I got sent a, detect a defective ball, which is really irritating. But that is mostly everything I have to talk about. The only thing I wanted to show you was I, I talked about my spinning wheel in the last episode, um, and I got some fiber. I, don't, I thought I showed it before, but I realized I hadn't so soft. This is from the Woolery, who they helped me figure out like what spinning wheel I had, like what I needed to buy for it. So this is some super fine merino top, 250 grams by the Woolery. It's incredibly soft, so nice. I'm so nervous to use it. I think I might have bought something that's like a little more difficult than I should have. I, I, just, I didn't know to buy, I just bought something like what would I want to use. Um, but I do want to do a spinning video soon where I kind of learn how to spin on camera and document the process of me trying to spin my first yarn. So definitely keep an eye out for that soon. But yeah, that's all I have to talk about for today. I feel like it was a shorter episode than normal. Um, I've, I don't know, <laughs> but thank you for watching. Please give me your thoughts on anything I talked about in the comments and please subscribe, give me a like, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.